Hi, welcome. Hearty welcome to you. We are going through hyperbolic functions and in the last session we have seen the graphs of sin, cos and tan hyperbolic functions. In this session we will go through hyperbolic of secant, cosecant and cot and try to also understand domain and range of these functions and also see whether these functions can have inverse functions or not. In the next video we will go through the inverse hyperbolic functions and also see if possible at the graphs of the inverse, inverse hyperbolic functions. So let's start with hyperbolic of secant x. Now what is hyperbolic of secant x? Secant hx is nothing but equal to 1 by cos hx that is 2 by e power x plus e power minus x So, if I substitute the different values, if I say x equal to 0, what happens? e power 0 is 1, e power minus 0 is also 1, 2 by 2 is 1. If x equal to 0, y equal to 1. So, I have a point, if x equal to 0, y equal to 1. Okay. Now, let us say if x equal to 1. What happens if x equal to 1? If x equal to 1, y becomes 2 by can I for simplicity can I write it as 2 e power x by e power 2 x plus 1 that makes our life easy this becomes 2 e by e square plus 1 that's nothing but 5.4 approximately by 8.3 that's nothing but 0.65 something like 0.65 so I'll take it as somewhere here and we know this is an even function so I will have exact value on the other side too now let's take x equal to 2 if I take x equal to 2 <coughs> excuse me if I take x equal to 2 y equal to 2 e square by e to the power of 4 plus 1. I am just substituting simply 2 into e square is around 7.3 e power 4 is 7.3 into 7.3 can I take it as 54? 54 plus 1 that is 14.6 by 55 so something like 55 into 0 0.26 0 0.265 so comes to somewhere here like this ok and here also it's like that so you can see now if I draw this curve how it looks like you can see that it is going towards a 0 but it will never touch 0 if it becomes let us say if you go to 3 this becomes 2 e cube by e power 6 plus 1 you can see that the value will become more on the denominator so that it will become towards a 0 so you can see that hyperbolic of secant x the max value is 1 and on both the sides it's moving towards as you go in x positive infinity or negative infinity y value is approaching 0 we'll come back on the domain and range of this we'll just go back to the next one that is hyperbolic of cosecant x now what is hyperbolic of cosecant x we know that hyperbolic of cosecant x is nothing but equal to cosecant hyperbolic x equal to 1 by sin hyperbolic x that is 2 by e power x minus e power minus x if I multiply it becomes 2 e power x by e power 2 x minus 1 so I if I have x equal to 0 then this becomes undefined so I cannot have x equal to 0 never I can have x equal to 0 ok if I say x equal to 0, y is undefined. It's not defined. So I'll go for x equal to 1. If I go for x equal to 1, 
y equal to 2e by e square minus 1 that is 5.4 by 6.3 something like point 0.85 something like point 0.85 so if it is 1 it is something like point 0.85 we know this is odd function, so for negative one also, it will be the same. It will be 0 0.85. Okay, right. Now, if I take x equal to 2, what happens if I take x equal to 2? Let us check that. If I say x equal to 2, y equal to 2e square by e power 4 minus 1. 2e square by e power 4 minus 1 that's equal to 2 into e square is approximately 7.3 e power 4 is 54 minus 1 is 53 so 14.6 by 53 that's nothing but equal to point 0.2728 in between something like so let us say point 0.275 or something we'll take it as point 0.28 Okay, if x equal to 2, we are going to y equal to 0.28. That means you can see that we are trying to approach 0. We are trying to approach 0. Can you tell me why? 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 Because if x value becomes more and more big, you will have denominator bigger value. If the value at denominator is becoming more and more, automatically you will be moving towards 0 because 1 by greater value is nothing but the smaller value. If I say 1 by 10 power 6, it becomes 10 power minus 6. That's it's almost equal to 0. Now let us do one more value so that we can check how this graph exactly acts like. So what I will do, I will try to take x equal to 1 by 2. Let's take interesting, right? Let us say x equal to 1 by 2. Now what is y? y equal to y equal to 2e by e square minus 1 no x equal to 1 by 2 this becomes 2 e power 1 by 2 by 2 root e by 2 root e by e minus 1 correct this becomes 2 root e by e minus 1. 2.7 square root is approximately around 1.66, something like that. And e minus 1 is 1.7. So, and the value is approximately equal to 1.9. So, you can see now how this graph behaves. Very interesting. It will be, if I take half it's like around 1.9 similarly here also it's around 1 point if I take half this is around 1.9 so you if you draw the graph now you can see how this graph looks like this graph as you go on x negative values more and more it will move towards a zero but as it is coming towards a zero it will be going to the more positive values but it will never x is 0 is not defined so y cannot be equal to 0 similarly you can see from here also this will be moving towards a 0 and you can see that the values as you move towards x the values will of y will be more and more so this is how the graph of cosecant hx looks like now let's move to cot hx Let's look at y equal to cot hx. What is cot hx? We know cot hx is nothing but equal to cot hx is nothing but equal to cos x cos hx by sin hx that is e power x plus e power minus x by e power x minus e power minus x or nothing but e power 2x plus 1 by e power 2x minus 1. You can see one more case where it will try to move towards uh, 
1 but can, it can never equal to 1. Let us ex examine this. If I take x equal to 0, if I take x equal to 0, 1 plus 1, 2 by 1 minus 1, 0. So, I cannot have value of x equal to 0. y is undefined. If I take x equal to 0, y is undefined. If I take x equal to 1, if I take x equal to 1, y becomes e square plus 1 by e square minus 1. That is 8.3 divided by 6.3. So, something like 1.3. So, if I take x equal to 1, y equal to 1.3. Similarly, here also, if I take x equal to negative 1, y equal to negative of 1.3. If I, if I take x equal to 2, let us check for x equal to 2. If I take x equal to 2, y equal to e power 2x plus 1 by e power 2x minus 1. That is e power 4 plus 1 by e power 4 minus 1. That is nothing but e square is 7.3, 54, 55 by 53 that comes around 1.04 something like near to 1. So, if I take 2, if I take 2, it is moving towards 1.04. If I take 2, it is moving towards 1.04. Let us take x equal to half and see what happens. If I take x equal to half, y equal to e power 2x, that is e plus 1 by e minus 1, that is 3.7 by 1.7, that is around 2.2. .2. So, we observe that if I take half, it is becoming approximately 2.2. So, half is, if I take half, it is going towards 2.2. .2. Similarly, if I take half here, it is going towards 2.2. .2. Now, you can join this curve and you can see that as the x value is less than 1 and between 0, the y values are increasing. So, they are increasing and as the x values are increasing in the positive direction, y is settling towards 1, towards 1, not touching the 1. Okay? Similarly, here also, if the negative values are more, then its values are more, the y value is increasing and uh, if the x value in the negative direction is increasing, then it is moving towards 1. It is moving towards 1. So, that is how cot hx looks like. We have an asymptote here. This is 1. Similarly, we have an asymptote here. This is 1. It will never touch 1. Similarly, you can see here. Here it will be 0 with respect to cosecant. Now, let us come back and see what are the domain ranges of these functions. Interesting, right? Now, secant hx. What is the domain? X side any restrictions are there? No, I can have all. So, I can say domain equal to R. Let us look at the range now. This is interesting. I see that range is Y values are 0 to 1. That is it. But it can never be 0, right? So, I will say it as 0 to 1. 1 is inclusive. Now, let us look at cosecant hx. What is the domain of this? x values. x values, all values I can have except 0. Because if I have 0, this will be undefined. So, can I say r other than 0? Okay. So, what is the range? Range also I see range 
let us see the range of this I see that range also other than 0 I can have all the values so I can say R 0 R minus 0 or I can say R other than 0 now let us go to hyperbolic of cot if I look at hyperbolic of cot I cannot have 0 here also because you see here whenever the sin hx is coming in the bottom denominator you cannot have x equal to 0 because it will become undefined so can I say domain equal to r minus 0 or r other than 0 now what about the range this is very very interesting now if you look at the range I go in the this directions to positive infinity okay but I cannot go less than 1 if I start here I can go negative infinity but I cannot go less than negative 1 so if I start from here negative infinity to negative 1 union 1 to infinity you see that none of them are square brackets because all of them are exclusive of the boundaries ok one more interesting thing before we close this are they can they have inverse functions or not let's look at that now here I see everything is exactly symmetric right about this y axis so I have to split the domain into half of it that means I will say x equal to 0 to infinity I can directly it is not inversible but if I restrict to the domain to instead of r restrict it to 0 to infinity then I can make it as a inversible functions I can have inverse function of that let's come to cosecant hx it's completely different so I can have inverse function of that because you can see for all x values y values are completely different I can have similarly if I look at cot also I can have inverse function of that because nowhere the y values are repeating so that's about the graphs of hyperbolic functions in the last session we have seen sine cos and tan in this session we have seen secant cosecant and cot what we have discussed is how the graph looks like based on that what is the domain and range of these functions and also can they have inverse functions once we know that how to suitable how to make the domain suitable for inverse functions we know that the domain of this function will become the range of inverse function and the range of this function is nothing but the domain of the inverse function so I'll go ahead and uh, see what are the inverse functions in the next session thanks for visiting bye for now